Hello sir, I am Roma Gonsalves. We just completed our first year of MBBS here and we are now about to enter our second year. So you being a microbiology professor, can you tell us what is exactly microbiology and what we are expected to know before entering second year in microbiology? Yes, for sure. So basically in the first year you saw about the normal anatomy, physiology and biochemistry of the human body. So in second year you will expect more of the abnormal versions of the human body and then you are going to explore into the deviations from the normal right so for this reason mainly you will have two subjects which will help you find out what is abnormal in that person that is pathology and microbiology right. and other the subject which you will have in the second year will be pharmacology which will help you to deal with this kind of abnormalities and how to manage them with pharmaceutical agents right so that is what second year is about now with regards to microbiology it is more like a pathology of the infectious diseases it was a subset of pathology in the past and it mainly deals with how to approach a case of any infection how to narrow down to a specific infection and how to rule out the other infections so whenever a physician sees a patient he will examine the patient and come to what is known as a clinical diagnosis so this clinical diagnosis in most of the cases is not a confirmatory one. So to confirm that diagnosis, the physician might need a radiological investigation or a laboratory investigation or a combination of both. So with regards to laboratory investigation of the infectious diseases, microbiology plays a very important role in determining the infectious positive organism of that particular infection. So in microbiology, you will have major four modalities which you need to concentrate on. First is the microscopy, in which a microscope, like a light microscope, can be used to determine which kind of organism is infecting the patient. Generally, this is more useful for bacteria and fungi which infect the patient. For viruses, generally microscopy does not play that much a role because they are seen only under the electron microscope and not this microscope. Then you have the culture techniques in which you provide nutrition to the pathogens and they will grow on a medium outside okay. the body and then you can conduct various tests to identify them and also know which antibiotic will work or antimicrobial will work on that particular infection. Okay. Then we have the serology in which you will detect the antibodies against those organisms produced by the host after a few days of getting the infection. The logic being, if the host is showing antibodies against that organism, that means someday the organism had entered the body of the, that particular person. In that case, IgM antibodies, they generally denote a recent infection and IgG bodies, they denote a remote infection. All this you will cover soon in your second year. And the fourth and very upcoming and important modality of diagnosis is the molecular methods. You must have heard about the RT-PCR during the COVID days. So that is one of the molecular method. So these are very good. They give the accurate diagnosis. They give it very fast. But the problem with them is they are expensive. So the molecular generally they detect either the RNA or DNA of the causative organism yes. and gives you the report. And sometimes they can also tell you about which antibiotic or antimicrobial will work on the patient. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, what? Uh, subject you will learn is the clinical microbiology so it is mainly concerned to the patient and how do you approach a case where you feel that this is an infective uh, disease and not a non-communicable or non-infective cause then how to approach which test to do at which stage of the disease that is what you will understand more when you do microbiology properly a simple example would be if a person is having a fever for only three days then it does not make much sense to do an antibody testing but you do an antigen detection or a PCR in which case you are saving the money of the patient. What we generally observe is students just randomly write RT-PCR, ELISA, you know, uh, culture, yeah. just generic answers. So that is not what microbiology is about. It is about what to actually do in this particular patient suffering from XYZ illness showing such symptoms, how to collect the sample properly, what are the precautions to be taken during collection of sample. And suppose if the report does come negative, what does that imply to the patient? 
that all these things you will learn during your second year MBBS in microbiology and that is not the end of it. You have to realize even if you don't cover complete microbiology, it will again come in your final year in the form of the other subjects like medicine. Malaria in the second year is yeah. not different from what you will learn malaria in the final year. year. So it is a combination of pathology, microbiology and what treatment to give, obviously your pharmacology will tell you. So that is that combination itself in detail becomes general medicine. So build up your base in your second year, do it uh, sincerely and start reading regularly. Just a few hours is okay. You don't need to read long hours, but you just make your best well and then infectious disease in the final year will be very easy for you because your concepts are very good and strong during your second year. Sir, as you mentioned about reading, so this is a very common question and anyone before beginning any academic year thinks about as books. So what books shall we be referring for microbiology? Yes, so generally we observe nowadays it's a technical age so students are relying on PDFs and other online resources. So that is okay but you somewhere you have to read the standard textbooks. I'm not advocating for any textbook but yes Anand Narayan's textbook of my uh, and Apurva Shastri's textbook that is what uh, most of the students use. So these are some standard textbooks you, which you need to go through and to build upon that you can always refer to your PDFs or your videos which you want. Generally you guys see the videos at fast speed so that is a passive learning you have to understand that. Always go for active learning, see the patients, read in the textbooks and then learn by yourself so you will retain more. It might yeah, take a little time. more time but you will retain it much more and that active learning will actually help you. So read your textbooks regularly just for fun also if you read that is also enough. Whenever you are you have the schedule given go and read that topic and go to the lecture or practical because even if you don't understand it when the teacher is teaching you then it will strike you Aray, haan, ye maine padha tha and ye aise hota hai. Kya? Okay, okay. now I understood better. So just be slightly more prepared and then uh, it is very easy, you, you don't need to worry about second year that much. Okay sir. Then uh, sir, coming to the theories and practicals, what exactly happens in the theory classes and what happens in practical classes differently? Yes, so for microbiology theory will be mainly about how the organism is, the, its structure, how it transmits and mainly it will be focused on the organism per se. Whereas in practicals, it will be more practically oriented. It will be about how to arrive at the lab diagnosis of that particular infection, which stage of the disease, which test you want to do, how sensitive or specific that test is. And now as it is the CBME pattern, we are not focusing on the technical microbiology that much, but we are focusing on the clinical microbiology uh, more. So if a, a particular test comes positive, what does it imply to the patient? If that particular organism is resistant to them, like let's say MDRTB, what does it imply to the patient? And if it, that test comes negative, then what does it imply for the patient? And there is a very important aspect of microbiology, which is very important these days, that is known as the hospital or healthcare associated infection control, which is very important in today's era. It stops man, transmission of many diseases as well as the multidrug resistant organisms. So we put a lot of focus as to the student should learn about infection control and they are learning in their clinical postings so that do they don't touch here and there and spread the organisms themselves. Right. So thank you so much for enlightening us on this and I'm sure the knowledge that you have imparted to me now will give benefit to all of us as a second year students. Yes, Glad best of luck. Thank you sir. Thank you.